So I went through everything that you sent. Um, there are some there is some stuff to go over. I hope this will show up on this uh, this camera. Uh, if not, hopefully I can explain it well enough that you can look at what you wrote down and compare it to what you have there. So I first looked at this like a couple or a few hours ago, so I'm going to start running through it again. So let's look at vocals, the vocal lines first. So starting out, uh, looks good. Now, the th so we're looking at this would be the fourth page I've copied. Let's see. Yeah, this would be because you sent me all six. So, page four. You can see the little 64 down there at the bottom. Bottom left, page 164 from the book. So, looking at the third bar here, trying to get this somewhat in, in view here. So, you wrote out one and two, three, four, I'm assuming it's just for that little skeleton count structure, but you didn't underline the one and two. So, if you look at the notation the itself, so i got to remember my notation here, every good boy, so that's a, so it's, that's a B, it goes B, C, B, and then over here, is also a B, so it's kind of it has like a combination of slurs and ties that you're looking at here. Um, so basically, it's it's saying that what's being slurred or like hammer on pull off and out the vocal line. So remember this this is a slur mark. So I'm going to keep calling it a slur instead of hammer on the pull off. So it basically, remember when a slur happens, it's kind of like you're connecting different notes together, no pauses or anything, You're just kind of flowing from one thing to the next. So with the voice, he's just going, uh, just hit that note, and he goes back up and then back down in one breath, or one word. So, and as you see, that more is written there and has that line going all the way over to the first beat there. That's where it ends. So... What you have here, it, you, he is playing on or singing on the one and two, so that it should be the one and two underlined for it to be correct, because it's not a tight. This from here, the count number two over to count number one, that is a tight note. So this to this is tied, but these, those are three individual notes. Da dun dun. So you got the B C B. I have no idea if that's correct. Probably not. Um, anyway, so that should be one and two for this part, and this is, this is one of the things that kind of comes up a few times. So continuing with the um, just the vocal line, we'll, we'll go through the vocals for everything first, and then come back to the rhythm, and then do the uh, first part of the solo. Uh, so let's see. So you got that right. Okay, so here's one thing that's kind of confusing to look at. So it's got multiple notes here because it's representing the uh, vocal harmony. Because he's got he's singing three different notes, all right? Obviously not at once. Um, so on the upbeat of four, and I'm looking, I'm starting to look at this. So we're on the where the chorus starts. So second line, second bar. And, boy, I hope I can finish this in time for my next student. Anyway, so, any, uh, yeah, second bar, we have, you, you got this right, the four and, which is good. So on this and, these notes here that come in on the upbeat of the four, it, it, it is tied here to the one as well as the three, but not here. The upbeat of the three there is a slightly different note. So it, what it looks like to me is, yeah, let's, let's see how many of those notes are changed. This thing is so small. 
two of the three notes are changed. The middle notes is not changed, so that continues with the tie. The last two notes here, it is different. So technically, the way you wrote out the count and underline is correct if it was for that middle note. But if you look at the other notes, and that slur, this is the slur mark that's going across here. So there is a change in the notation on the upbeat of three. So I would underline the, th the upbeat of three on that bar. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, so now look at the third line where it says threaten. Uh, bar two. So you have the one, two. So again, it's it's slurring some notes here. Uh, so one, this is, this is a confusing thing. I honestly don't know why. Hang on a sec. Okay, I see. It's, it's got a tie and a slur together. So from here. This note here, where it says N, so the, the two count, count number two, is indeed tied to count number three. It is not tied to the upbeat of three. So the AN of three, the upbeat of three, is a different note. It goes from an F note down to an E, F, E. So the upbeat of three needs to be underlined there. Similar things happening right after. So where he's singing Doom, you have, so you're right, you got your underline the upbeat of four, but the one also needs to be underlined here because this is a new note. It's not tied, okay? Now the one note, the one count here is tied over to the three count, so these two notes are tied together. Those are the same note. This note here is different. So we have a new note, new note, tied, new note, tied. So this needs to have the and one, uh, and, so the upbeat of three underlined, and that's it really. So the, so and one, and, needs to be underlined. So I know this, seems, this, this might seem confusing. I hope you're following along. So the, the, the slur remark starts here on the upbeat of four and it ends on the one count of the next bar. So you have this note, which is an F, then down to this E, so new note, new note. The next new note happens on the upbeat of three, and that's it for that part. So looking through more. So vocal wise that's fine good I mean, most of it's correct I understand that some of this does look pretty pretty weird so it's not <coughs> it's understandable that some of these would be missed so coming down here so looking at the bottom page bottom line uh, between bars two and three at the bottom here Kind of a similar thing that happened up earlier. So you have some stuff that's tied and some stuff that's slurred. And actually, it's just the way he's saying to midnight up here is the same way he's doing it down here. So it would need, you need to have, so you got the four and, which is correct, tie, tie, and then the upbeat of three needs to be underlined because you do have a change in notes. Um, as far as vocals go, that's good on this page. Just a fair warning, I might have to split this up into two videos. Just trying to get some stuff done in between classes today. Um, okay, so the next page, let's see. Good, 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 good. All right, so the fifth page that you have, where we're singing "Womb," so that would be top line, bar number three. 
um, similar thing. So the slur mark is from the count, count number one on this bar and ends on count number one on this fourth bar on that line. However, going from the, 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 there's a new note in here on the upbeat of four, so the upbeat of four should be underlined because it is a new note. And let's see, so that would be so it's going uh, from A to, from an A to a B note. So A here, and then it goes up to a B. So that is a different note. So looking at standard notation stuff, um, obviously it's easier to read if it's tabbed out, and that's what we're normally going to follow. So it makes it easier to figure things out when it's tabbed, I think. So it can be a bit more confusing when you're looking at a vocal line or just no tab at all and just standard notation stuff. And let's see. No, that is not underlined. That was from... That's print in the book. Okay, so that concludes the vocal stuff. All right, so I've got six minutes here. So let's start looking at the the rhythm stuff. So I apologize. I need to go scan through this again. Uh, this, there, there was just a little bit, definitely a little bit. Okay, so looking at the uh, second line here, you underline the one count of that first bar. There's nothing being played on that. That should not be underlined. Because that, pretty much any time something's in parentheses, you don't, you don't underline it. Because usually it's being carried over from a previous bar, which is exactly what happened here. He's playing this chord, both of these fives, on the upbeat of the four here. That is tied, and you can see the tied marks carrying over from here over to here. So you're not playing on that one count. That chord lasts, is, pl is played on the upbeat of four. It is not played again on the downbeat of one here. So that should not be underlined. So looking for more. That's good, good. Okay, so the same thing. You play this D5 chord here. So you see here, these are, these are tied. Tied notes. This note is tied over here. And so yeah, this the one, <coughs> the one should not be underlined, and the three should not be underlined. So those should be gone because you're not picking on anything, or you're you know not picking on. It sounds like you're being a bully to the chord. You're not picking anything. You're not strumming anything. No notes. No new note happens. So that is why that that part should not be underlined. So the chord here. Yep, you got the upbeat of four that the D5 comes on, but you don't, you're don't you not picking anything again until the upbeat of four here. So we, and yeah, so we're on one, two, line three of the page. Uh, so keep looking. Yeah, well, that looked good. If this one, it's kind of iffy. Um, so what, what they're saying here, is yeah, you, you strum this G5 chord for the first time on the upbeats of four. The downbeat of one, you're not picking anything, but it does have these slide marks. So I, mean, I guess technically it's okay to have that one underlined because even though it is tied, you are sliding down on that one beat. But I just wanted to clarify that so you understand, you know, when you see these, it's tied tied notes, and you see something in parentheses in the tablature, it's almost always going to be you don't play it. Almost always. The slide thing does make a difference. All right, I got less than three minutes here. Let's see what we can do. Um, hang on. Something looks funny compared to... Did I mix up the pages? No. I'm sorry, hang on. Did you strum that chord? Looks like I missed it. Oh, I see. 
I, I see what I missed. I missed the fact that it says guitars one and two with riff D. Um, riff D, where does it say it ends? So riff D is that right here, this whole thing. So keep in mind, riff D ends with that D5 chord. It's tied. This D5 chord here, you, so this one beat, count number one should not be underlined because this was tied from the previous measure. You can see that here, it looks like slur marks, but in this case it's a tie mark and it still ties over here. So it's good that you did not underline the three this time. That is correct. It should not be underlined, or the one. Um, so that's something we already covered right there. Oh, man, I'm going to have to split this up into two videos. Okay, so uh, if I can read this correctly, it says, When you bend up to a note, is this an emphasis? Um... When I hear the word emphasis, I think of striking the note harder to make it stand out. If that's what the question you ask. So that's what I think of when you say emphasis. I'll tell you now, what's happening is this tiny little note here, so where that bend is right there, you see how that small that is? Going over into that note, that's a grace note. Basically, that note and that note need to be played on the same count. So the bend, you're bending that five up a half step on count number three. So that's what's supposed to happen there. So you're count, you're bending that up on count number three. So that's how the bend is supposed to be performed. And then I got less than a minute here. So again, uh, so you had this A5 chord here after you asked your bend question. This is tied over to this chord here. So this one should not be underlined because you're not playing on it. You're, it's carried over from the previous measure. And, okay, so I'll have to cover the last page on a different video. Um, so, yeah, check that one out next.